Hi guys, so as you can tell by the title of this video, I am documenting um, uh, just another journey of mine that I have actually been dealing with since 2009. It is a subject that I've mentioned in a few of my videos. I haven't really gone in depth with it. Um, I actually dread talking about it because it's just something that I kind of try to keep on the back burner and not think so much about it. Back in 2009, I had a miscarriage. Out of something so tragic, kind of brought something else um, to my attention. I found a lump in my breast on the left side. It was on the outside. I'll include a picture to kind of show you guys where the lump was at. That lump, over the course of I don't know, this is 2018. So like nine years ago, um, I found this lump and it's still there. It hasn't changed in size or anything, which is great. But once I found it, I was told by my current OB at that time that I needed to have uh, six month rechecks on it to make sure it doesn't grow or anything like that. After having an ultrasound and mammogram done on it, that current lump ruled out any type of breast cancer. They actually defined it as being a fibroadenoma. Um, they also diagnosed me with fibrocystic breast disease, which was detected from my mammogram. I was like in my early 20s and already having mammograms, so that was scary. And this is before um, any family history of breast cancer. Uh, there was no breast cancer on either side of my family at that time. My oldest son at the time had just turned four years old. So he is now almost 13, so it's been a while. Recently, just in the last two years, I found a new lump. And after I found that lump, I found out that my sister had invasive ductal carcinoma. She had breast cancer on her right breast, I believe it was. And she ended up going through and having her breast removed. A couple months later, they found it in her other breast. So they ended up doing a double mastectomy. This is just like a year and a half, two years ago, right around the time that I found this second lump on the other breast. And my second one was found directly behind the lower part of the areola. So it's a little tense for me to think about because of my sister having invasive ductile carcinoma. Ductile meaning in the, the milk glands, the ducts, you know, behind the nipple. So that one there kind of concerns me a little bit. My OB doesn't seem too concerned, uh, but I still have to do every six month rechecks on it. She wanted me to have a biopsy on it due to me having a family history of breast cancer now. Um, today I'm actually on my way to my yearly OB exam. Fun stuff, ladies. Not looking forward to that, but I'm kind of ready to get this done with, you know. But I go in January for my recheck on both lumps. Uh, more importantly, the one on the right side that I recently found two years ago. And let me roll this one up. I may go ahead and go through with the biopsy then. They weren't concerned about the one on the left side when I had my ultrasound done here recently because it had been there for so many years and it had only changed like by a, what, like a, a millimeter or something like that, like not even a full millimeter. Um, so with it being there for that many years and not changing in size that much, um, they ruled that one out as still being benign, but I still have to get it rechecked because when you're diagnosed with fibrocystic breast disease, it makes detecting breast cancer a little bit more difficult so what they do, when you find lumps, they go in, they do a biopsy, then they tag them. Uh, it's a in and out procedure. It's done in like probably 30 minutes or less. And uh, it's painless. They do numb you for it. But they basically go in and they, they slip a piece of like metal or something around the area where the lump is. And that basically lets them know that this spot, this lump has already been uh, tested and it's ruled out as not being cancer. So... Um, I figured with me kind of documenting my journey with fibrocystic breast disease and finding uh, lumps and stuff since I was in my early 20s, um, documenting this journey might help me 
because maybe I won't be so nervous about talking about it and kind of putting it on the back burner because it is there. It's reality. It's just something that us as women, we go through. And fibrocystic breast disease is actually more common than I ever realized. Um, it actually runs in my family, so it is genetic. Within this year, 2018, over the summer, I found out that my grandma had breast cancer. I don't know exactly the type of breast cancer she had, but she is actually right now. She done had the surgery and she's doing great. She didn't have a full mastectomy. They just removed the cancer area. She is in her early 80s and she's been doing great ever since. She's 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 young and hip, you know, in her mind. Like she go, go, goes, even though she's, you know, 81, 82, I think now. She is just, she does not let nothing stop her. She amazes me and, you know, she gives me hope and inspiration all the time. Um, but she is actually on the chemo pills, so um, she's been doing great. Of course, chemo pills have some nasty side effects to it that she hasn't been doing too great with. But other than that, it's prolonging her life and it's giving her peace of mind that she just has one less worry to worry about now. Having gone through that and um, doing everything she can to prevent it again. The fact that I now have this second lump and uh, it's not been biopsied. It's about the size of a kidney bean, it feels like. When I actually go in January for my um, ultrasound and everything, I will let you guys know the measurements and everything to give you an idea. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and document this journey for you guys because I know a lot of you ladies might go through something like this and when you first find out, you're just like starstruck, like, oh my gosh, you know? Uh, and you, you so badly want to find other people who are going through the same thing as you to kind of connect with and see what their experience is and what it is they're going through and how they're handling it and just having that extra support. So, okay, I thought I was actually fixing to get stuck in traffic here for a minute. There's always a delay. Best to give yourself some extra minutes when you leave, but I've still got 29 minutes before my appointment. Yeah, I'll include some clips at the end of this video and let you guys know a little more information about fibrocystic breast disease and how they detect it and things like that. There's a really nice picture that I actually shared on my Instagram. Someone recently commented on it, so I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to document this journey. Maybe it might help relieve me a little bit instead of worrying so much about it because the thing is, a lot of us as women and even guys, you know, we fear the unknown. Like, we fear what we do not know for sure of and we fear it because obviously that is something we feel like we're faced with but we don't want to be so I figured maybe me talking about it might help bring a little bit of comfort for myself and hopefully some of you ladies out there so definitely stay tuned for more updates on this and I will talk to you guys and let you all know how my OB appointment went today bye guys all right guys I am out of there um, I love my doctor. She's amazing. She has been my doctor since, um, well, she's been my doctor for the last eight years. I really like talking to her. She, she's down to earth and, uh, she takes her time with her patients and stuff and she just chit chats and makes you comfortable and everything. And they got a new office here. If you want to see, that's their new office. But, um, yeah. So anyways, I had my pap test done. Um, I had the breast exam done. I do go in January for the ultrasound. Um, if I want to at that time, she said I can do the, the biopsy on the right side just to rule it out and, and not worry about it and wait for something to change just to get it out of the way, you know, and be like, okay, this is good, um, which I totally understand. So I told her we'll wait until I have the ultrasound and see if there's been any change and take it from there. Um, obviously, I'm not on any type of birth control. So we discussed birth control because normally birth controls have always um, just been something I, my body just doesn't agree with. I always have side effects. I've tried the patch. When I was younger, I did have the pill and I did good with the pill, but over the course of, you know, like, I don't know, 17, 18 years, pill form has really changed a lot with progesterone and all that stuff. So uh, she did find me one that hopefully um, doesn't like cause a lot of swelling and all that stuff. We did discuss, you know, breast cancer, obviously. Um, I did have to do a urinalysis to um, make sure that I wasn't pregnant. And oh my gosh, you guys, 
Um, in order to get birth control, you have to do a urine test to make sure you're not pregnant. So, um, how to do a pregnancy test. And the, the lady behind the counter, she took her time telling me the results. And I'm like, just give it to me already. I'm like, you're driving me insane. She's like, so, well, the results. And then she just kind of looked at me with a grin. And I'm like, don't do that to me. I'm like, come on. I know you're playing with me. She was joking. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> so, um... That's good because I don't want any babies right now. Um, I'm kind of busy with the three that I already have, and I'm not getting any younger. So, um, yeah, I'm looking into getting on birth control. I'll get my results back for my te uh, pap test here in another week or so. She'll send them over to uh, to me, the results. So I'll update you guys and let you know whenever I get those results and let you know what those come back as. I've never had an abnormal pap test, so I'm hoping that this one is good. Um, I am also having to have some blood work done to check my prolactin um, because ugh, talking about this stuff is a little awkward, but yes, I do still have discharge from my right nipple and uh, it very much resembles um, milk, but like before your milk comes in, you know? Um, so she is wanting me to do blood work to check my prolactin. She says it doesn't sound like it's a significant amount that's just like pouring out, you know, making my shirts and things wet. So, um, but she does want to just check that and make sure it's not related to the mass on that side behind the nipple. So we'll know more whenever she gets me scheduled for that. I'm going to get home, update my husband on how everything went, and I will be back for another video soon. Bye guys. Hi guys, hopefully you can see me okay. I am using um, my new tripod from a wonderful follower friend of mine I have got to know quite well and she is simply amazing and she sent me this gift and it's been a huge help thank you so much Donnell I love it um, this tripod is coming in handy for me today because I am a little bit in the process of getting cleaned up to um, go and have some blood work done this morning and I'm doing my makeup so I wanted to do a little bit of talking while I do this. Um, I, in my last clip, told you guys that I was having um, to have some blood work done to check my prolactin level because the very last thing before I even left my doctor's appointment yesterday was telling my doctor that, hey, I got some breast milk leakage on my right breast. Is that normal? You know, it's been five years since I've had a kid. Uh, I wasn't, it, it didn't even register to actually bring that up to her until like it just popped in my head and I was just like, okay, I'm here. I need to go ahead and mention that. So it was literally before she walked out the door and I walked out the door and, you know, was done with my yearly exam for another year. But she said, no, it's not really normal. She said, so what I want to go ahead and do is check your prolactin level. She said, I don't want to alarm you, but I want to make sure it's not um, in connection with your mass, which is the one in that same breast, uh, which is directly behind the nipple. Um, which, of course, I sounded fine and okay about it yesterday, and now today I'm just a nervous wreck. I'm a, I'm a complete mess, you know. I should not have got wondrous and went to Google and looked up what prolactin level um, increase means because it literally just kind of threw me for a loop. Um, basically what I've come across and I hope this isn't my case but um, if you have an increase in your prolactin which is um, a hormone uh, produced from the pituitary gland which is in your head it is like in the center directly behind your eyes it's really really the pituitary gland is really close to your eyes and your optic nerves so one actually symptom of this would be eye trouble and I've got eye trouble. I've got double vision, which I've had for the last like four years now. So that's why you guys see me wear glasses a lot in my videos, especially when I'm driving, um, because I have double vision. Um, I was told it was from a weakening of the eye muscle, which I'm kind of wondering if it could, could be connected to some other things now. Um, I'm trying to not worry so much about it and just let this blood work get done and then take it from there. Um, but if there is an increase in my prolactin levels, then um, that would be the reason for why I would have breast milk still producing, um, even though it's been five years and I'm not currently pregnant. I did do a pregnancy test at my doctor's office. 
Um, but that would then have me be led to another test, which would be um, an MRI or a CT scan, which is even more nerve wracking for me. So I'm really hoping that the blood work comes back okay. Um, and I don't have to do a CT scan or an MRI. Um, sometimes you just know, like sometimes you can just feel it in your body when something feels really off. This morning I had a complete meltdown. I was on the phone, I was crying with my husband because we just know when something doesn't feel right with our body, when things just don't seem to be registering. And I didn't think nothing about it yesterday. And then after talking to her about it and her mentioning the prolactin levels and then me kind of looking up the symptoms of increased prolactin, um, it led to other things, meaning, you know, the pituitary gland, which like I mentioned is in your brain, um, or well, not, it's within that area. Um, anyways, to get to it, you have to like go through your nasal cavity and stuff. Um, or worst case scenario, a, cra a craniotomy, I think is what they call it. Um, I did not bring my makeup brush in here, so I'm going to use my hands for my blush. Um, so... If there's an increase in my prolactin, what I will have done next is CT scan or an MRI that will be done to check my pituitary gland to see if I have anything benign um, growing around that, um, which would be the reason for an increase in um, prolactin in my blood and uh, would, which would explain why I've got the breast leakage. I did look up other people who did videos on prolactin levels and um, it, it, it did help ease my mind. Um, even though it, it feels serious to me, um, the way that these women have talked about their story, actually, um, they seem really calm about it. Of course, sometimes we'll put on a happy face in front of the camera. I'm not saying they're liars or anything, but I myself can put on a happy face in front of the camera when I'm feeling a thousand emotions. Um, I'm actually quite good at it, so. But um, sometimes I do break down. And when I break down, I break down. And this morning I had a breakdown. So I am doing some makeup to try to um, make myself feel a little bit better here. <laughs> uh, but I will update you guys um, here soon when I get the results back and let you guys know how everything checks out. But it's just crazy because I didn't think anything of it yesterday when she, you know, she's like, well, we'll check your prolactin levels. And I was like, okay, you know, no big deal. It's blood work. Okay. But then when I actually got home and I looked up what that was, it just, one thing led to another and it just started concerning me. And then I was reading the symptoms and everything. And then the symptoms were just quite a few red flags and <laughs> um, I could definitely relate. So Anyways, I'm not going to hold you guys any longer. I will update you guys here again soon. So until then, please keep me in your prayers, you guys. And if you don't pray, just send good vibes. And um, I will update you guys as soon as I know more. Bye. Hi, guys. So it is Sunday night. And um, I actually got my test results back for having my prolactin checked. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, then you already know what my results are. So I actually got my results back a lot sooner than I had expected. When I opened up my email the other night, um, it was actually uh, da, 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 it was Friday night. I opened up my emails. I had the blood work done on Thursday morning. I wasn't expecting to get my blood work back for like three or four business days. Um, at the latest because they told me that they were sending my labs off to be tested. Um, turns out they sent them to Birmingham, Alabama and they got my results back really, really quick. Um, I cried the entire evening of Friday. My husband came in the bathroom and was just like, I know this is what you need. He just held me and he hugged me and um, he just knew how much it was eating me up because, you know, I was basically in so many emotions preparing myself for the worst I guess that's how I respond you know to things um I went to bed with puffy swollen eyes the night before I did not sleep well I laid down and I was dozing off and I heard my phone ding and I thought 
I wonder who this could be. I thought it was a text message from somebody and I seen I had an email come across my phone. Um, so I figured I'd go ahead and check my emails and clear them out. And there it sits. Um, lab results. So I thought, because I was going to be waiting three or four days for my uh, prolactin results, I thought this must be the pap test. This must be my results for that. My husband was already asleep, so I clicked on see test results, and I seen the word prolactin. My heart just started pounding and pounding, because I thought, oh lord, I was not expecting this. And I, my husband was already asleep, and I wanted to wake him up, so I woke him up, and I said, look, I got my results. And lo and behold, normal. They were normal. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, it lifted such a weight, and I was filled with so much joy. Um, I cried so hard just a few hours before I opened up that email, thinking that I was going to get bad news. And I shouldn't have done that. If you guys can learn anything from me, do not settle for Google <laughs> whenever you're going through lab work and things because you're you're gonna scare yourself and um things may seem coincidental because you know that's what you're gonna look for you're gonna try to connect symptoms to yourself um when it comes to a diagnosis before a doctor or lab results actually say hey this is what you have um don't do that to yourself i literally wore myself out the other night crying and the night before getting no sleep about it um don't do what i did <laughs> you could see the worry in my face when i was doing my makeup before i even went and had the blood work done i literally worried myself sick um but they came back normal normal was like between a four and 24 point something and I was like at a seven point something. I can't remember exactly what it was. I'll include a picture of it here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But they were normal, you guys. And that just brings me so much joy. We never realize how much we truly take our health for granted until we're struck with a possibility of our health being um, slightly damaged, you know? So we're threatened with something. So. Take good health as a joy and get off the couch, get off of your phone. <laughs> when you get done watching this video, go spend time with your family. Go have fun. Go do something for yourself. Go enjoy life. Don't take your health for granted. Just don't. I will update you guys on my breast lumps in January. I'm staying positive and hopeful that those are going to come back, you know, benign fibroadenomas. Um, that is my hope. That is my wishes. I am praying for it. Send me your good vibes, you guys. Um, but I'm staying hopeful. I'm staying very hopeful. So I will update you guys again here soon. And until then, take care, friends. Much love.